Good morning again to everyone. And thank you for supporting SOAP by attending this wonderful OB Anesthesia meeting. Thank you to the coordinators for extending this invitation to me. And it's really an, a privilege, I'm humbled, to share the podium with such distinguished speakers. And I thank Dr. Sin and Siegel for really, for really setting the stage, a perfect segue into what I will be talking to you all about, which is a very important topic, communication in the labor and delivery suite. By the end of this presentation, hopefully each of you will be able to describe the Team Steps initiative. And let me just start by saying I have no disclosures, excuse me. And now to our objectives for this presentation, you'll be able to describe the Team Steps initiative and the framework. You'll be able to recognize the critical connection between communication and medical errors. And finally, you'll be able, able to even describe some specific examples of how Team Steps strategies are currently being used to improve communication and patient outcomes in the obstetric setting. That being said, teamwork is truly all around us in medical arenas as well as non-medical arenas. We know in aviation, if we look to the military arena, certainly in sports, we're all reminded of the critical component that teamwork plays in day-to-day -day processes. We also know that patients around the world are much safer when, me when medical um, healthcare delivery systems utilize teamwork strategies on a routine basis. So before I go any further, I just totally feel compelled to make two other disclaimers. As the daughter of an educator of 36 years, I have to say I can spell. The, the second P in steps is intentional. And number two, my utilization of grammar is also intentional as team steps will be used as a collective noun to describe the team-based curriculum system that has been jointly developed by both the United States Department of Defense and the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. And basically, this is an evidence-based, a field-tested teamwork system that's designed to improve quality, safety, and efficiency in healthcare. As we strive to understand more about team steps and how it works, We'll look to their icon for exactly its fundamentals. If you notice at the core, Team Steps is built upon four learnable, easily teachable skills, leadership, situation monitoring, mutual support, and communication. Surrounding these core skills, we notice red two-way arrows, and this is there to illustrate the dynamic two-way interplaying interaction between these teachable skills and also those desired team outcomes, which include increases in patient performance, excuse me, provider performance, attitudes, and also knowledge. Finally, encircling those core skills, we see the patient care team, and that comprises of all individuals who have a direct and an indirect role in making sure that patients do the best that they can. So we, if we look back to data released from the Joint Commission in the time years spanning 1995 to 2005, we know that in almost two-thirds of cases, communication failures or lapses were actually contributors to major sentinel events. Hence, this only reiterates the importance of our desire to try to communicate more effectively amongst our colleagues. The Joint Commission was so impressed with this Sentinel event reporting that they made in 2006 as part of their national patient safety goals, they encouraged healthcare providers to promote effective communication. Furthermore, how does Team Steps work? Basically, just like any other good patient safety system, it oops, it is built on all of these attributes that contribute, that being regulatory compliance, team training, process improvement, organization sharing and collaborating together, education, research development, reporting of data collection, and also innovations and lessons learned. And now we've gotten to one of my favorite slides of this presentation, because I think it beautifully illustrates how we can all navigate our way or have a roadmap to creating this culture of safety. 
In addition to that, you'll notice the debut of penguins throughout the slides. So it's only appropriate that I stop for a moment and kind of unpack the meaning of the penguins. Dr. John P. Cotter, an award-winning award Harvard professor, actually, these are the brainchilds of him. He authored a book note called Our Iceberg is Melting. And essentially, this is a simple fable that has a wonderful, teaches a, a wonderful moral lesson. Basically, the penguins live in their beautiful colony in Antarctica, and they face a dilemma. They have to move. They have to change their environment. And, you know, penguins, I guess, are kind of like humans. Some of them were kind of resistant to change. And so basically, in this fable, he outlines a step-by-step -step process of how anybody, if they follow the advice of the penguins, can adapt to or modify to change. So similarly, when we're in our various clinical practice environments and we have to change things, perhaps we can adapt some of the things that our good friends, the penguins, have done and have a stepwise approach. So questions you can ask yourself when you're hoping to implement some changes, you know, identify or ask yourself, what is my iceberg? What does it take to melt that iceberg? And do you have the courage to swim forward like the penguins for the sake of effective change, that is, for increasing patient safety? So thinking more as we want to look at how exactly Team Steps works, it's so important um, that you get everyone on board as soon as possible. Get everyone on board from all levels. You want to have your departmental chair chairmen and leaders get involved. Also support from ancillary staff and also from hospital system administrators because that's going to be key if you want to successfully plan and implement and sustain some of these measures and integrate them into your daily practice. So why use Team Steps? Because it works. We know that it is helpful in producing highly effective medical teams. This optimizes the use of information, people, and resources in order to achieve the best clinical outcomes. And it teams of individuals who communicate effectively and support each other dramatically reduce the consequences of human error. If that explanation was not compelling enough, then we can think of the governing and regulatory agencies that all jointly endorse utilization of teamwork strategies, such as the AAMC, the ACGME, the Joint Commission, and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. This slide provides a listing of some of the clinical arenas wherein there is research existing that speaks to the utility of team-based strategies successfully um, helping to improve patient outcomes. This next slide actually shows a specific example of how teamwork strategies in their implementation were successful in the labor and delivery unit. This study by Dr. Benjamin Sachs and his colleagues actually showed a 50% reduction in the weighted adverse outcome score, as well as a 50% decrease in the severity index. All very good things. So as we segue into our next portion, we have our friends the penguins again. And I want to read this quote from an author I know, because I think it's quite profound. Communication is the response you get from the message you send, regardless of your intent. So the most basic definition of communication is an exchange between a receiver and a giver. It's the process where information is exchanged between individuals, departments, or organizations. And it's truly the lifeline of any team. And it's most effective when it permeates every aspect of an organization. Most of us automatically think of communication as being an, a verbal thing, which it is. But I also encourage everyone to think of the nonverbal cues that we send off when we communicate with others, our body language, our posture. Sometimes we send off messages that may not be um, consistent with what the message we're trying to convey. So that's definitely something to be mindful of. When we also think about achieving effective communication, it's always important that we're brief or concise. We want to be clear, make sure that the message that we intend to send is the one that we have conveyed. And also, we want our communication efforts to be timely. It looks like one of these penguins got the memo too late that he really shouldn't be um, swimming in those dangerous waters. 
This slide lists several information exchange strategies, system SVAR, which stands for Situation, Background, Assessment, and Recommendation, Call Out, Check Back, Hand Off, Huddle, and then Advocacy and Conflict Resolution Techniques. By a show of hands, could I see those individuals who've heard of any or all of these information exchange strategies? Excellent. So the Thank you. So the transfer of information, um, when we think about handoffs, it's so important that the team relinquishing care gives the appropriate message so that the continuum of excellent care can take place throughout. And we know from Joint Commission National Patient Safety Goal 2E that a very good handoff really should be standardized and should also include an opportunity to ask questions, clarify, and to also confirm. So this is a picture of the mnemonic that is a part of the team's STEPS curriculum, I Pass the Baton, and basically um, this mnemonic or acronym stands for all of those attributes listed here. And the great thing about this handoff, although it's generalized, it can be modified to fit whatever situation it needs to be used in clinically. And in fact, we know from literature that the best handoffs um, are those that are tailored to the area where you're going to be working. Another example of an information exchange strategy, the huddle, and this refers to those ad hoc meetings wherein we can regain situation awareness, we can discuss critical issues and emergent cares, excuse me, emergent events. Huddles allow individuals to anticipate outcomes and likely contingencies. They allow for the assignment of resources and also an opportunity to express concerns. Furthermore, the huddle empowers all team members to speak freely and to ask questions for the, for, the, for the matter of clarifying what's best for the patient. Also, it allows a balanced workload within the team and utilization of conflict resolution techniques. So the two challenge rule, at the very least, each of us as healthcare providers, first and foremost, we're patient advocates. So in other words, it's our responsibility to assertively voice our concerns at least two times if we sense something that may breach patient safety. This two challenge rule, rule concept empowers any individual to stop the line if he or she senses something harmful to the patient. I really aspire to be a graceful and elegant lady, um, but I will say that it's okay to cuss, but only when appropriate. And when I mean, what I mean by cuss is C, please express that you're concerned. You also want to express you that you are uncomfortable, and you also want to express S, that you think th something is a safety issue, and this is your utilization of a safety phrase to ensure that everyone is on board on the same page and with the same goal of optimizing patient care. So we know that because individuals can be so resistant to change, there's no surprise that there are lots of barriers or challenges to communication. And some of those are listed here. Language barriers, distractions, physical proximity, personalities, falling lapels during a presentation, conflict, shift change, and lack of information verification. But I hope to now look at the next slide video, which will actually show us an example of pretty good handoff communication. Watch out! My way! I want you to do something very important, all right? Okay. I want you to run home, and I want you to call the ER of North Bank General Hospital, 932-1000. Tell them to set up OR6 immediately and contact anesthesiologist Isadora Turek, 472-2112, beep 12. Have them send an ambulance with a paramedic crew, light IV, D5 and W, KBO. You got it? 
Lucky on North Bank General Hospital, 932 and 6 contact. Anesthesiologist is Dr. Torque, 472 tb 12 Ambulance is Paramex and Lavi, D5 and WKVL. That's good. Sounds like a subdural hematoma to me. Oh, it does, does it? Well, it's not your job to diagnose. But I thought... You thought, you thought, just go! Three years of nursery school, you think you know it all, but you're still wet behind the ears. It's not a subdural hematoma, it's epidural. Ha! God damn, that makes me mad. Now, that's good communication. Do we all agree? That was a great handoff. So finally, I'll now discuss some actual clinical applications or implementations of our institution's utilization of Team Steps tools. I strategically placed this slide not to trigger a flash mob of the Texas Two-Step, although that probably would have been really, really cool, but rather it's listed to just kind of share with you um, what some of my colleagues, we've known to, we're, we're starting to affectionately refer to our utilization of, to some of the Team Steps tools as the Texas Huddle. And by that, if you know about country western dance, then the two-step is composed of cuddling with your partner and handing over your partner. So at our facility, we're doing our modified Texas two-step with our multidisciplinary team huddles and handoffs. So a further description of those. Twice daily, we hold multidisciplinary daily huddles composed of clinicians from several teams, obstetric anesthesia, obstetrics, neonatology, nursing, midwifery, and family medicine. And this forum is dedicated to the discussion of the care for high risk or red flag patients. It's really an awesome opportunity where all the different specialties have an opportunity to express what is important to them. And as a result, we definitely are seeing better patient outcomes. Additionally, it just gives everyone a chance to know who everybody is. And also, it's been advantageous as far as helping us to more, strate more strategically or more efficiently schedule our OR cases for the day and run the labor and delivery deck. At these daily huddles, the obstetrician leads what we call a clinical snapshot. As I mentioned, it's comprised of introductions, and this is actually the template that is regularly, for, that is regularly utilized, and that way we're always consistent. We're able to make sure that all of the issues are always covered. <clears throat> At the end of every huddle, our clinical snapshot, the obstetrician is always sh very sure to reiterate our institution's safety phrase. We have adopted, I need clarification. And once again, that signals a hard stop. It lets anyone know that they can, it makes anyone be empowered to make sure that they are clarified, that they are sure on all the issues of patient safety. I mentioned the importance of institutional buy-in. And this flyer is posted all around our labor and delivery unit just to remind individuals of this safety phrase and its importance. Another thing that we are doing in our obstetrical anesthesia rotation, we're encouraging all of our trainees to go for the gold and pass the baton for the sake of patient safety. Passing the baton is not only for the track and field relay, but we want to pass the baton of information to make sure that we ensure the continuum of care of all parturients. I mentioned earlier the utilization of a tailor-made handoff for obstetric anesthesia. And this is actually a template. This shows the one that our trainees are currently using, and it's based upon the I pass the baton mnemonic but it is customized to obstetrics and it brings up some issues that are quite important to those um, pr providing quality obstetric anesthesia care. So finally, a few closing thoughts as we pull it all together. I want to personally challenge everyone to work with others to utilize some of the tools and strategies that have been presented in this forum because we definitely know that good communication and teamwork improves patient outcomes. We also know that we should set aside time for handover communications and that we should utilize documentation that's tailor-made to that setting. 
So I do want to end by sharing this website where the Team Steps curriculum can be accessed. And a lot of this presentation is based upon information that you can find there. And also, I'll read these quotes by a couple of very distinguished individuals. Vince Lombardi said that the achievements of an organization are the results of the combined effort of each individual. And Norman Schwarzkopf said, the truth of the matter is that you always know the right thing to do. The hard part is doing it. Once again, thank you for attending this meeting. And we want to invite you to, a, to join SOAP and also to join us at our annual meeting, which will be held next month in beautiful Puerto Rico. And I thought it was only fitting to say thank you with this slide that shows school-aged children using teamwork to even convey the message of thanks.